One early afternoon, I was driving home from a friend's house, and I passed a secluded little park. I knew the park had a few hiking trails that led to a massive cliffside overlooking a valley and a forest. Photos I had seen of the view were breathtaking, so I decided to check it out for myself. It was an absolutely beautiful summer day, and early enough in the afternoon that I figured I wouldn't scare myself at the small sounds of nature. I pulled into the empty parking lot, parked my car, checked the map, and started along the widest path. It was the easiest looking path that consisted of climbing over a few rocks and some small hills. It was also the most clear of the paths, with few curves and little brush. About halfway through, I came upon a small hill that led down to a large clearing. As I came up to the top of the hill, I saw an old man with white hair, just sitting on the rocks at the bottom of the hill. I walked down and smiled at him. Where are you heading? He asked with a smile and a pleasant tone. I told him I was trying to get to the cliffs. His demeanor quickly changed. You should be careful. I figured he was just trying to be helpful, as I was a five-foot-tall teenaged girl, and the cliffs were very high and overlooked an incredibly steep valley. I smiled, thanked him, and began to continue walking. With an incredibly blank stare and flat tone, he insisted. No. You really need to be careful. It no longer seemed like a friendly warning. I explained I hiked a lot and was confident in my ability to handle the cliffs, and thanked him again for his concern. A lot of teenagers come out here to look at the cliffs. He pauses. A lot of them never come back. <laughs> I nervously laugh. I mean, he has to be kidding, right? It's almost as if someone is pushing them off. The look in his eyes and the tone of his voice sent a chill down my spine and told me this was not a joke. It sounded like a threat. Being that I'm very paranoid, specifically in the woods, I figured I was being dramatic. I thanked him one last time and continued heading in the direction of the cliffs. He remained silent. I only made it a few steps away from the clearing when I realized I couldn't shake this feeling. The old man had freaked me out way too much for me to continue on and enjoy myself. I turned back around towards the clearing and realized he was no longer there. I hadn't heard him move, and I couldn't see him in the very clear path ahead of me. Only a few seconds had passed since we had parted ways. I hastily set off the way I had come, intently listening for any sounds surrounding me. I made it safely to the empty parking lot with no issues. That's when I realized the parking lot had also been empty when I first arrived. Where did this man come from and where did he go? I jumped in my car, threw it in drive, and sped all the way home. Nothing ever happened. My tires weren't slashed. I didn't see eyes peering out from the forest as I drove away. I never saw the man again. I sadly never went back to see the cliffs either but I could never shake the feeling I got in those woods. Maybe he was just a friendly old man worried for my well-being. Maybe he was my guardian angel saving me from a clumsy fall. Or maybe he was planning to maliciously throw me off the cliff. It's the summer of 2013. I'm 21 and just finished my junior year of college. The second week of August, a group of my friends and I go on an eight-day camping trip. It's seven of us total, four guys and three girls. We're camping in a semi-remote campground in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. It was a large campground, but very few other campers were there. There were a few filled sites near the front of the campground, but we purposefully requested a site in the back corner. We were completely by ourselves. During the trip, we planned a white water rafting trip for one of the days. We were hiking Mount Washington towards the end of the trip and thought maybe we would do one or two small hikes, with one or two days of just chilling by the lake in the campground. We also planned on doing plenty of drinking during the evenings. The first couple of days of the trip were fantastic. Whitewater rafting was a blast. Everything was going great. 
So it's the evening of our third day. We have a roaring fire going. We're all just hanging around the campsite, drinking and messing around. Then around 9.30, a disheveled looking man walks past our site. His clothes are kind of torn and worn out. He has messy, tangled hair, etc. And he looks to be maybe in his mid-40s. This isn't weird, though. We all just think it's a camper doing a late evening stroll around the campground. About an hour and a half later, we see the same man walk past our site in the same direction. This time, he's walking slower, almost with a bit of a limp. We're all pretty drunk at this point. I think one of us might have yelled something out to him, but he just ignores us and keeps walking. Mildly strange, but still is probably just somebody who wanted to take a long walk. We wrap up the night around 1.30 or 2. The fire is dying down and we head back to our tents. I usually love sleeping while camping. I find it extremely peaceful, but for some reason this night, I was having trouble sleeping. I get up to take a pee in the woods when I do see a faint light about 50 to 75 yards ahead of me in the woods. It looks like a dim flashlight or something similar. I decide I want to investigate. I go back to the tent, and one of my other buddies is still awake so I tell him about it. We get up to investigate and when we do, the light is no longer on. Feeling a little unnerved, I shine my flashlight around the woods a bit, but don't see anything, so I decide maybe my eyes were just playing a trick on me before I had to head back to bed. Sometime later that night, I wake up to a terrifying scream. It was Sarah, one of the girls we were camping with. I jump out of my tent as quickly as possible and nearly run into her as she's running back into our site, still screaming. She says that there's a man standing in the middle of the woods. Now our whole party is awake and freaking out. I try to calm down Sarah enough to get her to explain what actually happened. She says she went to go to the bathroom in the woods and saw the man from earlier just standing there about 15 feet from her, not moving, like a statue. We're all freaking out, yelling, screaming, making a giant commotion. I'm internally freaking out too, but I'm trying to calm everyone down enough so we can actually do something. We obviously decide to get the hell out of there. We frantically take down our tents, basically just ripping the poles out and throwing everything into the back of our cars. Then we sped out of there. It's around 4 a.m. We're in two separate cars and decide to just drive away from the campsite and try to clear our heads. Eventually, at around 5.30, we find a small diner that's open and decide to head in for some breakfast. We all have different theories about what just happened. Some of us think that we ran into a homeless guy who was camping out in the woods and was surprised by us. Some of the girls think maybe he was purposefully stalking us. Either way, obviously none of us were comfortable staying in the campground again. I head back to the front desk of the campground with the two other guys. We explained what happened and the guys at the front desk actually seemed to believe us, but they said there were definitely no other campers currently that fit the description of the guy. They were insanely nice about it though and actually refunded most of the remainder of our stay. As a group, we decided that screw it. We weren't letting one freaky guy ruin our trip. We found another campground a good ways away to stay in. Fast forward two days. We're hiking Mount Washington. We get up really early and get to the mountain at around 7.30 to start hiking. We're a little bit halfway up the mountain when we see the very same guy hiking down. Though this time he looks much better. His hair isn't crazy. His hiking clothes are relatively clean. We're all just frozen. A few of us let out a surprise scream. He just strolls past us with a massive grin. Luckily, there are enough hikers that nothing could have really happened. We decide to continue hiking up anyway, since he is headed in the opposite direction, and hope we just never encounter him again. We did finish the hike and luckily didn't see him. After that, we did decide to cut the trip a couple of days short. Looking back on it, we've all come to the conclusion we are likely being stalked in some way. If it was just some homeless guy in the woods near the campground, what the hell is he doing hiking down Mount Washington a couple of days later? It was a pretty unnerving and bizarre experience.
This happened a couple years ago when I was 16. It was a warm summer night. On nights like these, me and my friend would often grab a pack of cigarettes and a bottle of beer each and go outside to enjoy them. We come from a really small town, where everyone is somehow connected, so the only way for us to drink and smoke without our parents knowing was to do so in secluded places. Luckily, the town is surrounded with huge forests. We were both very familiar with them since we practically grew up there. This one time, it was night as usual. We both grabbed our forbidden contraband, some flashlights, and we headed out. We took the path through the long meadow, which ended at the edge of the forest. From there led a path through the forest by which it's a 20-minute walk back to town, in steep downhill terrain. At the place where the meadow and the forest meet, there is a gazebo with a fireplace where people would go for picnics. As we were walking through the meadow, we would stop a few times to ensure from afar that the gazebo was unoccupied. It was around 11 p.m. and the night was incredibly dark. Even though we were out in the open, we had to use our flashlights to see anything. When we made sure the air was clear, we approached the gazebo to light our first cigarette. We were just standing there, puffing and talking, while always scouting our surroundings with the beams of our flashlights. After about five minutes, we decided to take the path through the forest back to town. We walked about 30 meters, at which point we couldn't see the place where we had previously been standing. That's when we heard it. From the gazebo where we were just standing seconds earlier came a long, terrifying scream. It sounded as if somebody, a man by the sound of it, was being cut into pieces while still very much alive. The kind of scream that turns your blood to ice instantly. After the first scream, there was a pause for a few seconds. During this whole time, we were both so scared that we couldn't even move. Then, it started again, even louder and more terrifying. The second scream snapped us back into reality. Without a word, we just started sprinting through the rough terrain, not once looking back. At this point, I was so pumped up with adrenaline that I couldn't hear anything except my own heartbeat resonating in my ears. We've never run that fast, and we didn't stop until we reached the lights of the town. When we finally did, we both just sat on the sidewalk under a lamppost, panting and gasping for air. After a while, we started talking about it. We came up with the conclusion that either somebody was having fun at our expense, or somebody got really hurt. In the end, we decided to head back there first thing in the morning, but surprise, surprise, no signs of anyone being injured or anyone struggling. We decided that it was just somebody playing pranks on us, However, to this day, it keeps gnawing at me. Something doesn't add up. We were standing there for quite some time, so the other person must have been very well hidden. On the other hand, it would be almost impossible for anyone to just walk in there without any light since it was so dark. And even if he had some kind of flashlight, we would have certainly spotted him.